背自古楼地，响声鸣里里，虚空三岁。Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Ah, my microphone is not working. Take it back up here. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Ah, I see. That was the answer. Okay, we're on the road. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Hung Shur. It is Saturday, October 7th here in the Gold Coast of Queensland. It's Friday, October 6th, California. Glad you're with us this morning. Looking forward to our investigation today of stories of the life of our grand teacher, Master Empty Cloud, Master Xu Yin. And there we go. Sound should be better. Yes, there we go. All right. Uh, Vera is going to be our Dharma requester today, all the way from Sao Paulo, Brazil. So let's ring the bell three times, make three half bows, and ask Vera to do the Dharma request. Here we go. One more. All right, Vera, uh, if you would like to request Dharma, please do it now. Viu the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion. For the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize no birth. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Homage to the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Amo sadan to suchedo ye ulahudi san me o san pu to she. Namo sadan to suchedo ye ulahudi san me o san pu to she. Wu shang shen shen wei miao fa bai qin wan she nan zao yu. 
我见见闻得受持愿皆如来真实意 Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Venerable Master, Dharma friends, welcome to our Sutra Lecture. Our, it's not a Sutra Lecture, welcome to our Dharma Talk. Uh, glad that you're here with us. Appreciate the request, Vera. Um, let's continue with our formality, our formal opening, and say that we respectfully acknowledge the Kombumiri people of the Ugambe language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and all First Nations people whose <coughs> sovereignty was never ceded. We say, Woman Gong Jing Di Chang Ren, Yogambe Yuzu, the Kumbu Mari Ren, Shuoman Suyan so Tai Di, the Chuan Tong Chien Hu, her Shou Hu, ah, Joshua, ah, Chien Tong, Chuan Tong Shu Shu Jo, her Shou Hu Ren, Woman Shang Go Chu Shen Zai, her Wei Lai, the Chang Lao Men, Jing, Shi Jing, Bing Che, Sang, So Yo, Chong Wei Bei Chi, Ju Chen, the Di Min Zu, the Yuan Zu Min, Shi Jing. My tongue is not moving in accord with my intent this morning. Gotta get some glue and not some glue. I got a less glue, the glue solvent uh, lubrication. If I had so as an old train conductor, I would take the oil can and get my sound producing apparatus working. Here we go. The bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. Chung Shang Chuan San Chien Jie Nei Fo Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xun Qi Fa Jie He Ping Yi Yi Bao Tan Wo Ho De Yes, all right, there that's underway. Okay. Hey, good to be with you, and by you, I mean friends in Fremont who are hosting this talk, uh, friends in Sao Paulo, Brazil, who request Dharma, and professors at Dharma Realm Buddhist University who are co-hosting, our translators here in the Gold Coast of Queensland, much gratitude to you, and our Vietnamese translating team. I do want to say uh, at this point, Ru Guo, Go away, Yuan Yi Ting Waso Chang the Yingwen Ting Ishe Liu Li the Putonghua Jiga Ranti Zoom Ranti gave me Chi Hui Ni Jo Dao Jiga Kung Jiban the Yo Sha Jiao Ni Jiao Interpretation Ni Ge Di Chiu Xing Ni Bin Yo Chong Wen to Ke Yi Ting Dao Guo Yu Ha. Okay, and our Vietnamese translation team is working hard. Go to the chat box and you'll find a link for a Vietnamese translation. All righty. We have friends from Sydney, Aurora, Bernie, Xingfei. We have Bill is here from Cascade, Colorado, Bogdan from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Brenda from San Leandro. Brian is here from Campbell. Hi, Brian. And Katrina, back to back there. Katrina from Danville. Celeste from Hong Kong. Connie from Sunnyvale. Uh, Saratoga, uh, let's see here, from, yeah, not Sunny, yeah, Sunnyvale. Duke Levan, Montreal. Elaine, Ethan, and Justin. Hi, all of you from Round Rock, Texas. Emma from London. Friends from Shandong. Uh, Helene from Oslo. Hua from Tracy. Hong from Alameda. Uh, let's see, another Hong from San Jose. Jane from Berkeley. Jennifer Los Altos. Jensen from Jakarta. Jim is here from San Jose. Welcome, Jim. Jeannie Moshir is across campus from me right here in the Gold Coast. Kane is on from Switzerland. 
Kevin, Karina, and Ellie. Oh, my goodness. The whole gang is here. That's great. Kitty Sorrow is here. Congratulations to DRBU from getting a stellar report from the WASC accreditation team. Lan Nguyen is here. Leone is here. Well done. Zhang Li Hua is here. Hi, welcome. Zhang Li Hua. And Lin from San Rafael lives in New York City. Loy from Singapore. Maggie from San Jose. And Mai from San Jose. Matthew from London. Michael from St. Petersburg. Wang from Mesa, Arizona. Olivia from San Francisco. Hi, Paul. San Francisco, not uh, Pinole. Okay. Chu Lian from Guangzhou. Huan Ying, Huan Ying. Ron from San Jose. Sandy is here from Santa Clara. Song from Song, Song from Elk Grove. Shu from Oakland. Sunisha from Dublin. Susan, Susanna is here early in the morning from Hong Kong. Tanya Kai from Singapore. Tang Tran Tam. Val, Valerie, Willie, YC, Yendo Ying. Okay. Huan Ying Goe, welcome all of you. Friends from Pleiku, Vietnam. Then from Ah Shamadi Fang, Ayo, Nikan Chujang, Hai Ning, Ah Hei Long Jiang, Ji Lin, Ah Lan Hai, Ah Su Zhou, K Hai Yo Shamadi Fang, Ah Hai Yo Hubei Tang Shan, Beijing, Hainan, Shenzhen, Zhejiang, Shanghai, Shanghai. Huan Ying Goe, welcome all of you. Glad you're all here. This is great. I wish we had. Faces, we could all sit in a very large circle, but I guess in reality, the planet gives us that very circle. Maybe that's why circles are so effective when we're trying to make a community because we are aware that we're sitting on a very large, solid circle. Hmm. Not so solid, in fact, that might be a dynamic sphere of gas and heat. Um, before we start. I wanted to bring this photo up. This is a picture that I found the other day um, <clears throat> from, uh, reportedly from the Vinaya Studies Academy at Nanhua Si. And you see right here, can you all see my cursor, the green thing? Here is Master Empty Cloud right there in the middle sitting with very young monks. These monks are too young to be ordained. They're just shamis. Uh, probably the first on the left, one, two, three. I suspect four of them are training because they're so young. These two on the end look a little older. Then you get to Master Empty Clouds row. These are monks uh, in training still. Uh, here are some young shamis. I want to direct everybody's attention to the back row from the left number three. This monk right here. Is this Master Shenhua? At the time, he would be known as Dulun. Because this is the Vinaya Academy where at Nanhua Si, where Master Hua was appointed uh, head of education. So it says Nanhua Jie Lu Xue Yuan Quan Ti Yuan Sheng She Ying Ji Nian. Yeah. Uh and it's thirty-seven plus eleven forty-eight. This is the year that Master Hua was there. I have never seen uh this picture identified as one of Shufu's photos, but I believe that's what we're looking at right there. So if anybody can confirm, have you anybody else seen this photo before? You're welcome, Katrina. Okay. Uh, 不知道有没有谁见过这张相片，肯定后最后一排从左边往右，第三名会不会是师傅？因为那个地方是正确，那个时间是正确。我从来没见过这张说商人在看起来这位是不是师傅商人那个时候就杜伦法师还没有成神话 And this monk right behind uh, Master Empty Cloud looks a lot like Xu Lang Fa Shi <coughs> Although I don't know if he when he left for Hong Kong, um, he would have had to have left at the same time 
because he and Shurfa were contemporaneous in Hong Kong. So, I don't know how many monks are able to leave Nanhua Su. Okay, that's a question. We'll ask further. We have some experts to ask. Yes, okay. Today, here we go. Here's our first story today. And as I was preparing today, I was thinking, what a nice job to be a sacred storyteller. Could do worse, huh? Having stories to tell is wonderful. Having sacred stories is even more wonderful. Uh, now, I want to, I'm going to unshare my screen briefly because I have a corrected version of this that came to me by email today and I have not yet downloaded. So let me do that. Go offline briefly. Here we go. Okay, put that away. And busy fingers moving over the keyboard. Okay, now we're ready. There it is. Yes. Okay, look at this beautiful layout. All so tidy and clean, uh, thanks to the hard work of our dedicated volunteers. First, let's focus on the Chinese. This is story number 13. Master Empty Cloud was 17 years old. The year was 1856, as you see. Uh, this is Xian Feng Liu Nian Bing Zhen Shi Qi Sui. How? The title is Qian Ran Li Jia Bu Guo. Attempting to leave home secretly, he was unsuccessful. Okay. Ready? Gong Nian Shi Qi Yi Bei Kun Shi Wai Dao San Nian Yi Xin Zhong Chang Shen Chang Si Chu Jia Wei Seng Yi Ri Cheng Shu Wai Chu Bu Jue Zhi Ji Qian Tao Wang Nan Yue Gu Cha Zhong Ti Du Chu Jia Qi Liao Yu Yu Hui Qi Tu Zhong Zao Shu Fu Shi Ren So Jie Hui Si Yuan Wei Guo Quan Song Gui Jia Okay, there it is. Um, read the English first. When the master was 17 years old, he'd already undergone the hardships of practicing Taoism for three years and was indeed disappointed. He constantly thought about leaving the home life and joining the Buddhist Sangha. One day he took advantage of his uncle's absence to quietly flee to Nanyue. His intent was to shave his head in an ancient temple and officially leave the home life. Little did he know that on a winding mountain path he would encounter envoys sent by his uncle to intercept him and escort him back. His aspiration was not realized. He was reproved and brought back home, scolded and brought back home. Hmm. Take a look at the image here. So, in the mountains, there's nature on all sides. There's a building here. There's steps. A beautiful landscape, rugged mountains, and two people in, not in work clothes, but in the robes of maybe servants or attendants, have apprehended this young traveler who is wearing fancier clothes, and they are pleading with him. They're begging him, but using a little bit of force. You can see they're not happy. They're dealing with the son of their employer, so they have to be, they can't hit him, they can't push him, but they are insistent. He's been caught, busted, he's got to go back. The verse says, To su li chen xiao xi da shu yi qi chu 
Qing Lu Xia, Gong Wu Bao Qi, Qian Wang Zhu, Zhong Bei Qie Hui Reng Gui Jia. Um, we haven't commented on the the literary poetic quality of Master Hua's verses, but man, oh man, Shu Fu's verses are just outstanding. Renouncing the vulgar, leaving the dust, he strived to be like Siddhartha. Who would have guessed that the rugged mountain had a steep path and narrow, had a path steep and narrow? Moreover, he lacked the precious thoroughbred and the aid of the heavenly king. So in the end, he was overtaken and went back home again. Zao Gao. Okay, um... Last week, we explored looking at the Chinese characters. We can do that with the verse, because the verse is economical to the extreme. Terse, not a word can be wasted. To, su, casting off the common, the ordinary, the non-sacred. Li, leaving behind, going beyond chen, dust. The, um, notice the, the li has a bird radical, short-tailed bird. This, if you do, take this li character and divide it in half, the right-hand side here is a, a bird's tail. And my goodness, um, <laughs> I'm looking at a very fat white-headed pigeon right outside my door. Uh, that is a chubby bird, golly. When you take a, <clears throat> a bird's feather and look at it closely, uh, I recommend if you have the opportunity, maybe you've got a feather on your desk or outside uh, amid the leaves, um, take a close look at bird feathers. They are, they look something like this right-hand side of this character because they are patterns. They're um, fibers kind of like uh, cloth is woven, but they're, they're natural and the fibers are um, so perfect <coughs> in their alignment, in their pattern, in their structure, that without any weight, as they move through the air, they uh, move the air. They're, they're so densely knit and, and you think, how magical, how wonderful that birds, instead of having skin with pores, they have these uh, feathers that move the air without weighting the bird down. And as a result, the birds can, with coordinated effort, can lift off the ground. So here is one of the, the pictograms, is, is the bird. There's a human right beside it, right in the middle, the same as the left side of Su, that's a human, that's a person. Ren, um, did I see Ren here? Let's see, yes, everybody take a look. Right here, Shi Ren, that's human. It's obviously a picture of someone walking, a stylized photo of somebody with two legs. So when you take that same character, and stand it upright, you get the left side of Su here, and the middle of Li. So, leaving behind, there's motion here. What? Dust. The bottom of this character, the three lines at the very bottom, is a picture of earth, the ground, dirt. And so, casting off the common, leaving the dust behind, Xiao, studying, learning from, Shi Da, who is Shi Da? Shi Dartha. This is the Chinese way of approximating the sound of the Buddha's personal name, Siddhartha Gautama. Shi Da. It's a Romanized attempt to make the sound Siddhartha, Shi Da. Shu Yi, who thought Qi Chu, look at Qi Chu. Remember last week we had mountains? 
that left side of qi, the left side of qu is the mountain character stuck together. Meaning these two characters obviously have something to do with mountain ranges. So who would have thought uh, on the crooked, twisting, narrow pathway, Qing is a narrow road, Lu Xia, where uh, it's hard to travel, Geng Wu Bao Ji Tian Wang Zhu, even more in the, this place where you have to exert yourself to travel the mountain road. Uh, Wu Bao Ji, you don't even, you even more so, don't have Bao, jewel, precious, valuable, Qi, the steed, the horse, the mount, the equestrian vehicle to travel, Tian Wang Zhu. This is celestial, the devas, of the devas. This is the word Tian, the opposite of earth. Look at, if you straighten out the center and add a stroke at the bottom, you have king. So celestial king aid, Zhu, to help. This right hand half of Zhu, this word, that's strength. So even less do you have the aid of the celestial king's valuable horse. What's that about? Ah, Shifu's verse says, he lacked the precious thoroughbred and the aid of the heavenly king, the deva's king. So if you are one of the kings of heaven, if you're one of the four kings of heaven in that first level of heavens above the earth, above the human realm, you have what are called qibao, seven precious things. That's one of the signs when you are a zhuanlun shengwang, when you are uh, ordained, uh, inaugurated, consecrated as a celestial monarch, a wheel turner, king, a chakravartin, seven signs spontaneously appear as proof of your status, your new status. It comes with the job. And among those seven, Joshua Tian, Zhuan Lun Sheng Wang, Qi Bao, the seven seven precious objects. One of them is Tian Ma, the horses of heaven. You get one of these legendary, incredible mounts, a horse that can gallop through the skies with speed unmatched. So it says, Gong Wu, Master Empty Cloud at age 17 was running for his wisdom life running for his life, running for his wisdom, trying to escape uh, <coughs> a fate ordained by his father that he didn't want. And he was on foot, heading, trekking through these narrow passes all by himself. And he didn't have the celestial horse. He didn't have the king's help. Zhong Bei Qi Hui, he was forced back home. And notice uh, Da Xia Jia, according to the traditional rules of Chinese poetry, rhyme is important on one, two, and four. If it's a four line verse, Shirf was got it right here. And beautiful, beautiful poem. Renouncing ordinary, leaving the dust, he tried to be like Siddhartha. In other words, jumping over the palace wall, going into the wilds for six years. Who would have guessed that the rugged mountain path was steep and narrow? He didn't have magical help or the, the support of devas. In the end, they took him back home again. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, not so easy, is it? You want to leave home. You decide that you're going to give up your two beautiful wives promised to you. 
you're going to stay um, pure. You're going to give up a secure future as the son of an official comfort, status, ease, wealth, all those things. You're going to let them go to follow your heart and cultivate the way. How hard is that? So rare. Even now, in our time of uh, the Dharma's end, oh man, look around the world and you know that the entire planet is going through a very challenging time right now. So one of those signs is fewer and fewer people uh, make this kind of resolve to say, I'm looking within. I value my heart, my spirit, the intangible but real aspirations of the soul. That's most important. I'm going to find any method I can to develop those, to make the what's invisible but real, manifest, bring it out, bring out those qualities of kindness, compassion, wisdom, virtue, eloquence, mm, generosity, mm, virtue. That's what I'm looking for. Fewer and fewer people um, have that Bodhi resolve. Here is one who did. It's 1856. The American Civil War is still four years away. Uh, Abe Lincoln is not president yet. Uh, and this young man has made the Bodhi Resolve. He wants to cultivate. His dad knows that and has kept him at home under the tutelage. He's got a tutor, he's got a mentor who is a Taoist. An ordinary man maybe has been uh, trained in yoga and different kinds of practices meant to keep the body um, alive, f meant to bring immortality and insights. Taoists are not just ordinary folks, certainly, but they're, they don't have the goal. The goal of the practice is not to leave samsara, to end birth and death, to put an end for suffering for self and others. It's not that. It's another kind of goal. And there's value there, there's skill, it's not easy. But Master Empty Cloud has such uncommon wisdom, even as a young boy, that he looks towards the end of the path and he says, no, this is not for me. I've got higher aspirations. So he takes an opportunity when his uncle has gone to split. But unfortunately, wow time was not right. His conditions were not uh, ripe. <laughs> On the road, uh, he met two servants who, man oh man, were they glad to see him. If they had come back home empty-handed, oh, they probably wouldn't have gone home. They probably would have followed <laughs> Master Empty Cloud to shave their heads too. Uh, yeah, so Big disappointment for the young man. What is he thinking? Uh, one more. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Number 14. Di Shi Si. Tan Fa Du Shuang Qi. Speaking Dharma to cross over his two wives. Same year. Same age. Here we are. Gong Zhi Jia Zhong. Kong Gong Zai Du Chu Zhou Nai Sung Gong Qi Qi Zong Qi Zong Di Fu Guo Zhi Quan Zhou Gong Fu Nai Ying Chu Tian Tan Er Shi Wei Gong Wan Hun Er Gong Yi Kong Si Xiang Wu Wo Wu Ren Yu Nian Hao Wu when the master arrived home, it was feared he would again escape, so he was sent with his first cousin, Fu Guo, 
to Quanzhou. His father formally received brides from the Tian and Tan families for the master, and the master's marriage was completed. The master, however, had already realized the emptiness of form. He held no view of himself or of others. He had not the slightest thought of desire. He was clear of mind and pure in body. Therefore, although they lived together, he remained undefiled. Moreover, the master extensively explained the Buddha Dharma for the two women, so they became disciples of the Buddha. <laughs> All righty. Now, it's important to get this straight, see what's going on here. Uh, look at the photo, not the photo, look at the engraving, the woodblock here. Here is uh, the young man. He is facing the Buddha, seated, meditating. And he has, it's Maitreya is the Buddha on the altar, interestingly, or the Bodhisattva. It's a Buddhist altar. There's incense, there's candles. Um, Maitreya has got his palms together. There are two young women, one on each side of the young man. There's an attendant here at the altar. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's his cousin. The young women are... I don't know anything about Qing Dynasty fashion, so I can't tell what the, the robes, what their, their clothing indicates. Mm, but they are both promised as brides to Master Empty Cloud as a young man before he becomes Empty Cloud. And he had already agreed with the two of them that he was unwilling to marry, but would agree because he wanted to be filial and keep peace in the family. So he also did not, for a young woman at that point, to have been um, fianc a fianced, a fianced, fianced, made a promise to a man um, if she then, uh, to, to do so, you had to go out from your family. And there's the, the matchmaker, there's dowries, there's all kinds of details in a wedding between two families, especially two noble families like these, and or three noble families, the Tian and the Tan family, and then the Xiao family, his, his, his family. Um, if you make the promise and go through all these steps and then don't go through with it, the young woman in question, in this case, the young women in question, would, their lives would be over, basically. They would, they would be dishonored uh, in this old system, in the traditional system, and probably they would have to either be sold or go off to a monastery under duress or worse. Uh, they would become pretty much family-less and a life of suffering. So Master Empty Cloud, knowing this, uh, goes through with the wedding. He, they become his wives officially. They join the new family, and it's a position of honor for them. However, he has not given up his resolve to cultivate. He's already holding the precepts of a monk, and he says to them, um, we will be Dharma friends. We're going to stay pure, so don't worry uh, about me, the two of you. Take care of yourselves. Meanwhile, let's look into the Dharma together, and he does. They study the Dharma, and uh, what they don't have that would have secured their future is children, but that's his choice, um, and he is clear about it, so he provides for their safety and security and honor without uh, consummating the wedding. Shuang Su, Shuang Qi Shun, Shi Su, Yi Xin Yi Yi Qiu Pu Ti, Fu Wu Ran Yuan Qi Jing Lu, Zai Chen Chu Chen Qiao Yu Shi. In living, Together, he complied with the ordinary, not the vulgar, ordinary world. But with single-minded, lone intent, he sought enlightenment. 
Since there was no defilement, his wives were pure companions, both in the world and beyond it. He was a skillful teacher. Now, um, we haven't talked about this yet in our series, but in China, there is a uh, movie. Uh, it's a, a soap opera style movie, a serialized ongoing soap opera story based on Master Empty Cloud's life. It's called Bai Nian Xu Yun, A Century of Master Empty Cloud. And there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of stories within stories about it, which I could share. Um, it's available out on Shouhu, I believe, or Baidu. I, you can find it. Uh, you can find it in online in China. I don't have a copy. I haven't looked for it. Um, and one of the uh, there's of course all kinds of critiques, good and bad. There's reviews of it. I remember years ago when it was brand new one of the comments about it was this episode the 14th episode uh, in Master Hua's picture biography was covered extensively in the Bai Nian Shu Yun story they it took two or three or four episodes to <laughs> to portray this is with actors and scripts and all, to portray this particular fact of Master Empty Cloud's life, the fact that he had two wives and stayed pure. Somehow, as the uh, writers of the story, the way they interpreted Master Empty Cloud's life, they paid a lot of attention to this. <laughs> I remember it was like, okay, guys, you could have done it in five minutes and moved on, but they milked this particular episode for all it was worth uh, and de-emphasized things like the pilgrimage. So, I don't know, <laughs> playing to a mass audience somehow. So possibly if you ask them, they would say, well, to get it by the censors, we had to obey what we were told. That's also very possible that the realities of censorship and media at the time required them to emphasize some aspects and de-emphasize others. But it was, remember how funny it was that uh, the, the non-love story, the uh, <laughs> Master Empty Clouds, uh, willingness to, if you think about it, it's quite a challenge. Young man, uh, 17 years old, he's certainly full of uh, hormones and all of the energy of, of a teenager with two young wives. He's married to them. And yet his decision his priorities, his values are to cultivation, even at age 17. And I think back to what was foremost in my mind at age 17, uh, certainly can't compare. Uh, the, uh, the thought of cultivating the way was not alive yet in my awareness. Um, and yet here he is, just at the time when young men and young women think of romance and and uh, partnership and you know happiness as the culture portrays it as the marketplace culture falling in love with love is a splendid thing right so to be able in the midst of that wind of uh, wanting to and having his father his father set it up he said, okay, time to marry. I'm going to pin you down to home. You're not going to leave home. And 
locking him in to his wedding. Um, with all that fierce pressure, Master Empty Cloud is true to his Bodhi resolve. And he says, no, nope, I'm going to become a monk. I'm even with the all of the uh, cultural pressure to marry and settle down. Nope, I have other plans. How extraordinary. Um, our teacher, Master Shenhua, the same, the same. He was able to get through the time of um, discovering your, uh, as your body grows and emotions grow, um, how difficult this is to, uh, to be able to keep your Bodhi resolve intact. So uh, Lily has put a YouTube link in the chat box. Is that Bai Nian Xu Yun? I think it must be. Um, I will investigate. Thank you, Chang Yuhua. Thank you for that. I'll look into that. Um, so, quite a remarkable story. Uh, who can do this? You know, to say, yeah, I know, um, goodness, uh, the commercial culture, this is big business, the business of romance, um, music, movies, television, news, who is dating who, who is divorcing who. This is just what sells, what keeps eyes glued on uh, phones and social media. Celebrity marriages, celebrity divorces, my goodness, it's an endless stream. Uh, infidelity, um, who is cheating on who uh, among national leaders and, and all of the, the confusion around this one issue of men and women together. Uh, it's, it is daunting to think that a 17-year-old young man would uh, be able to say, no, no, I've got other things in mind, and not do it, uh, not say that there's anything wrong with the young women, Miss Tian and Miss Tan, but instead getting their approval, getting their agreement. Ultimately, I believe, well, I don't want to say, um, but he, he was able to bring them to the Dharma as well. So a positive approach to it. It's like how good it would be if the three of us could keep our minds focused on Dharma and keep our energies intact instead of uh, cutting something off, making them un super unhappy or vilifying them in any way, right? So not easy to do. This is real wisdom. Um, so this issue, um, being able to, to uh, arrive at the Sangha while you're, uh, without having uh, squandered all your blessings, not easy to do. And um, here is our role model, Master Empty Cloud, indeed. So, um, storytelling. This is, uh, this is, when you, when you talk about, I'm going to, to uh, stop sharing my screen here. When you talk about this level of engagement with the Dharma, um, the desire to join monastic communities and being frustrated, there are similar stories out there. Oh. 
St. Clair. Um, people know of St. Francis of Assisi, a thoroughly remarkable monk, um, where legend becomes miraculous. He's not only legendary, but there are miracles associated with him. There are similarly miracles associated with his female counterpart, St. Clair. And the I didn't do all of my homework, so I can't give you the dates. Maybe people know the dates of St. Clair. But Clair was a noble woman. Um, I don't know if she related to St. Francis, but she was his contemporary in Italy. And she, like he, St. Francis was the son of a merchant. She was uh, called to, the, to become a nun. She wanted to serve Jesus, serve God. She did not want to marry and become a noble woman. And so she ran away to join St. Francis. And her father <laughs> had other plans, just like Master Empty Cloud's father and uncle. And they caught her in the monastery, in the convent, and pulled her away. And there are stories about how she resisted. They had to physically pull her away. And because she clung to the altar table in the convent. And they put, put a sack over her head and picked her up and bodily carried her away and brought her back home. Well, St. Clair ran away again. And she uh, cut her hair, which was unheard of for a woman. That was a large part of her attraction uh, and her identity as uh, a, a young bride. You know, it was, she reduced her value as a bargaining chip when she cut her hair off. She bobbed her hair. But they pulled her back again home and had to do so physically. They had to, to force her out of the convent and back home. And what did she do? she ran away a third time. And this is, mind you, with a lot of skill uh, and planning because by the third time her father had barricaded her into the home. But she had the, the heart of her family servants because they, she was so pure and so determined that they couldn't bring themselves to force her into marriage. And so the third time her father said, uh, I'm done with her, let her become a nun, wash my hands of this rebellious young woman. So uh, Claire did, got her wish, uh, became a nun, a Catholic nun, and her devotion, her purity, her resolve was so... Um, evident. She was radiant. She, her charisma that came from her virtue was so overwhelming that there are legends about her life, such as when uh, not only did crusades go out from Europe to uh, conquer, to slaughter, <laughs> to ethnically cleanse uh, the, the civilizations of Africa, but they went the other way too. And as I said, I didn't do my homework to give you the details. I should have done that before. But when I believe uh, the Turkish or proto-Turkish, what we now call Tur Turkey, Turkish tribes, armies came to Italy they were militarily successful. And at one point, the, uh, was it the Ottoman hordes were outside the gate of the convent 
about to burst through and St. Clair appeared. She's 13th century. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for uh, 1200s, uh, they were about to break down the gates of the convent and St. Clair appeared above the gate and the radiance of her personality and the saintliness of her presence uh, actually quelled the invasion and she saved the, the nuns in the convent and the city behind it by appearing on the gates and you could say, speaking Dharma, <laughs> uh, converting the attackers and convincing them that she was a saintly being and it was not to their advantage to, <laughs> to continue their attack. So powerful was the presence of St. Clair. And she, uh, her order called the Poor Clares uh, continues to this day. So how wonderful to, uh, to have a similar uh, rocky beginning to a monastic career along with Master Empty Cloud, uh, St. Clair of Assisi uh, had the similar resolve. She ran away, they would pull back, she ran away again, pulled back a second time, ran away a third time and succeeded. So uh, I'll, I'll get the details next time, so fill you in. All right, so thank you all for listening to the stories of Master Empty Cloud. And again, um, I wanted to ask folks, um, back row, third from the left, is that Shurfu? I had never seen this photo. Uh, I thought we'd, we'd seen most of the photos of Master Empty Cloud, but I was looking at this one, and it said, oh, Nanhua Su, 1948, Vinaya Studies Academy. And I thought, hey, that's when Shurfu was there. Could that be he? He was the Chao uh, Wuzhu. He was the head of, of instruction then. I bet that is. Maybe somebody can confirm. Anybody else seen this photo? Okay, there we go. All righty. Uh, time to dedicate merit and take part in the long line of folks who um, step into the Dharma that we study and put it to work for them. This is one of those ways to do it. So the Dharma of transference, of dedication, of merit is Samantabhadra's crowning practice. The banjo is not tuned. And uh, he wants us to pick it up and make it our own. We do it with the mind. You make a wish say all the goodness that comes from being together on a Friday afternoon, on a Saturday morning with Dharma friends worldwide. There are 90 of us online uh, sending out this uh, circle around the planet. Of I found this on the web. Is a good thing to do. And we do it with a thought. Make a wish. It's up to you how you want to dedicate your merit. Let's do it together. Here we go.
If people hear and see Our hands and hearts can find in giving unity May our minds awake To great compassion, wisdom and to joy find reward all who sorrow need their grief and pain in this boundless light dispel the darkness of our endless night because our hearts are one this world of pain turns in and wise may all become compassionate and wise we can bow to the Buddhas Okay, first bow, second bow, third bow. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Gratitude to all the volunteers for your kindness in putting this talk on the road. Amitofu. See you all next week, everyone. Be well. Bye now.